Yo, howdy. Welcome to the first episode of Tristan Take Video for 2022. I'm up in Andorra at the moment. I've been here for the last couple of weeks just alternating between skiing and riding. And uh, today I'm going out for a freezing cold bike ride with two guys who are much, much better bike riders than I am. I'm riding today with Pavel Sivakov and Jack Haig. So one thing I want to address before I roll out and meet the guys is what I wear for deep winter rides like these. Today it's minus seven degrees outside. It's a freezing cold morning. And even though there's sunshine around, it's really, really chilly. And a few people have asked in previous episodes how I stay warm when it gets really cold. So stick with me while I show you what I wear and then we'll meet the guys and uh, we'll go for a bit of a ride. I think today we have five hours in some deep winter conditions and uh, we'll chat to you more shortly. <laughs> Alrighty, so first things on the menu, how to keep your feet warm. I always recommend a pair of merino wool socks. Merino wool is really good in winter if you're not wearing shoe covers, but we will come to those soon. The good thing about merino wool socks is that when it's wet outside, they actually keep your feet quite dry. Merino doesn't soak up the water like regular cotton socks do. Next up, I have a pair of Attacker All Day Winter Tights. These ones are quite thick. They have a good amount of water resistance down the bottom here. These ones are good down to about minus 10 degrees. Next up, I have my base layer. This is a long long sleeve thermal base layer that I wear all the time in winter. Next up I have an A-line long sleeve thermal jersey. This is one of Attacker's more affordable lines of jersey but it's super super comfortable. This has a fleece lining inside so when you pair it with that base layer it's super super warm. Next up is Attacker's all day quilted gilet. This one has a bottom zip so you can actually zip it up and down from the bottom which is amazing so you can access your phone or when you're hot on a climb you can just open it up a little bit. It's also got Prima Loft inside so it keeps you super super warm. It's not just a wind gilet. It's got a couple of reflective strips on the back and it's actually got a pocket on the back there as well so you can put your phone and things like that in the back. The next thing I have is a pair of Attacker overshoes. They've got a fleecy lining inside. These are a must have on a day this cold. They just keep your toes and your feet and your ankles warm. That's a massive part of keeping your entire body warm in the depths of winter. Over the top of all of those layers I'm going to put a windstopper jacket just to keep myself a little bit warm for the descent. So that's everything I wear. These are all the critical parts of what you need to keep your body warm. One final thing I'll say is always bring a buff as well. A buff is critical for winter riding. It keeps your neck warm, which if you keep your neck warm, that keeps your entire body warm. And uh, if you need to, you can put it over your ears. You can also put it over the top of your head. So I always recommend bringing a buff. With all that being said, I'm gonna get out and ride some bikes and I'll uh, check to you guys shortly. Today I'm out for a bike ride with two cyclists who are pretty good. You might know them. This here next to me, this is Jack Haig, Australian from Bahrain, victorious. Jack was third at the Vuelta Espana last year. He's won a stage of the Tour of Poland. He won a stage of 
Valencia. Yeah, well to Valencia. And second overall at Valencia. And then in the back there, we got Pavel Sivakov, who is an extremely talented Russian cyclist, who's won the Tour of Poland overall, Tour of the Alps overall, and uh, absolute weapon riding for Ineos Grenadiers. We came down through Andorra this morning in the freezing conditions, passed through the border. We've headed along the Val de Cedania, and Jack's actually just been doing some uh, zone three training. So some sort of me medio training. Just tell us about that quickly. So it's this time of year, it's winter. You're focused quite heavily on zone three, not doing anything too intensive for your heart rate. Yeah, so how it normally works is uh, most pro teams do two training camps in the winter, one in December, one in January. The December training camp is more of like uh, getting to know all the new riders and new staff and doing more volume work. Now the one I'm about to leave to very soon is more about higher quality training and you start to do some higher intensity stuff in January, but predominantly from November, December, early January is kind of zone three and below kind of work. Okay, so not getting your heart rate too high. You yeah. were saying you've only, before New Year's, you only had your heart rate up above 160 once and that was at the previous training camp. Yeah, basically we're trying to build a really big aerobic engine. So where are we trying to do the work? If you're familiar with lactate in the body, it's kind of around that two millimole where your body's just starting to produce a tiny little bit of lactate, but you're definitely not sort of breathing really hard or it shouldn't really be very difficult. So you were doing those efforts zone three, just to give you an idea, Jack's zone three is definitely my zone four. He was doing that effort, those efforts along the flat, along the valley there, between 340 and 360 watts, yeah? Yeah, we generally try to do it, actually the pre-season stuff now, I mainly do off heart rate because the body's changing quite fast. After taking the break in the winter, you're sort of rebuilding fitness and sometimes that wattage range can change a little bit as you're getting fitter, so. Okay. Normally it's about 150 to 160 heart rate. So you're looking at heart rate more than yeah. You're not paying attention to what's really. Yeah, like it's there, but I'm mainly focused on making sure that I'm inside the heart rate zone. I think one of the biggest mistakes when you're doing sort of interval training at the start of the season like this is if you're following power, your first interval might be a zone three interval, but then the third one, because you're not quite as fit and the fatigue resistance isn't quite there, your heart rate can be at threshold or above. You're no longer really doing a zone three interval. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. I think it's quite important at this time of year to just focus on being on the more conservative side than trying to push it too hard. And obviously Jack is Australian, but not doing Australian nationals. So he's got no build for the moment. Jack is building up for Volta Catalunya, Paris Nice, Dauphiné, Romandy, obviously the tour. Not tour Romandy, for... Romandy's way too cold for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Way too cold. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's a good little segue. I talked this morning about uh, what I'm wearing. Tell me, what are you wearing? What are your layers at the moment that you've got on? Um, I've got like this thick fleece layer here. Okay. Underneath is a jersey. Okay. And then underneath that is like a long sleeve base layer. Okay. And then neck warmer, little beanie thing underneath here. Yep. Some big gloves, bib tights, and some those massive neoprene booties that you always get at the start of the year and you think you're never going to use until it gets really cold. Yeah, until it's like it was this morning where it said minus seven. All right, cool. We're pretty much coming up the climb. Jack's done his effort. Now we're going to turn around, keep heading down, maybe go find somewhere to get a brew. Yep. Sounds good. Highly enjoyable. 
so you were just doing your efforts on the on the flat how come you do them on the flat at this time of year as opposed to going up a climb i guess we did that little bit of that climb but like well to cut a long story short it's a long loop to the cafe and if you do it on the climb the loop gets even longer if Fair i do enough. it on the flat yeah okay it gets shorter and we have a coffee sooner ah so it's quite simple really it is no scientific formula <laughs> no the scientific formula is the time it takes us to get to the cafe. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, that fucks my question a bit. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, there's some science in this. Uh, nah, all about the brews. Well, today's a uh, public holiday in uh, Catalonia. True. And uh, our favorite cafe, Nordest, is closed, unfortunately. So we're gonna go on a bit of a search for whatever's open, but Nordest is normally our go-to spot. They have some specialty coffee and nice cake and would highly recommend to anyone. Nordest was actually closed last time I came through here, which was when I did my Three Nations Loop vlog a few weeks ago. Two Nordest closed in a row. Gerard, I'm telling you now. So we're just coming along to put chair that Jack's finished his second effort there. So we're just heading to find a coffee about the halfway mark through this ride. What's happened? It's closed. Yeah. Stitched up. Stitched up. Go and look for another one. Closed as well. No cake shops open. Yeah. I just want a brewski. All right, this is looking promising. Perfecto, gracias. Bit of ice cream for the midwinter, midwinter cafe stop. Just what you want when it's minus one degree or something like that. This is what you get when you can't find any cafes Yeah, very true. <laughs> Bit of helado. Is it all right? Mm. All right, I'll ask the question. So what do you normally eat on a, on a ride? Because I don't imagine you usually eat ice cream mid-ride. What do you normally eat on like a, a five and a half hour training ride? Carrot cake. Yeah. Carrot cake. Carrot cake in Nordisk here or a healthy donut, which isn't so healthy. Also a brownie and then normally a coffee or two. And that's if you stop, what are you carrying in your pockets? Oh yeah, so like uh, today it's almost three hours now yeah. and I've had two gels, one and a half biddens of like a carbohydrate mix. Okay, and you'll have about the same coming back or is yeah. this? No, about the same coming back. And you Pavel, um, what do you carry in your pockets? Today I don't have any effort, so I just had some um, homemade banana bread in it. That yeah. was good. Yeah. And otherwise you yeah, had gels or like bars. Do you always aim for like the 90, 90 grams of carbs an hour kind of concept? It depends. No, I think, now I think it's good to, to train your gut, you know, if you can absorb a lot. The more you absorb, the better. So uh, yeah, it's good to, to, to aim for, for higher on the effort days. On a general day, no, but on the effort days, yeah. So train your gut to absorb a lot. So during races, yeah, you're used easier. to absorbing yeah, that amount of carbs. Yeah. You don't have any bad stomach or reflux going in or out. Yeah, it depends on the training day. So like in my team, we kind of work off like zero to 30 grams of carbohydrate for like an easy two, three hour ride. And then if you're doing like a longer endurance ride, like 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And then if you're doing hard intervals, sort of 60 to 90. And then if you have a really hard day, you can do 90 to 100. So it just depends on what you're doing. So you're sort of scaling it for the for the level intensity. of the intensity. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's an interesting way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. So not always just 90, 90, 90. No, no, no. Because you also still want to teach your body how to use some fat stores and use not just the carbohydrate that you and it's also not necessary like you're not needing those carbohydrates as much if you're not doing higher intensity yeah it's more once you start doing like that a threshold and above to kind of work when you're really using the glycogen okay yeah that makes sense goat ice cream i think so i didn't i didn't hear what she said goat cheese yeah I think, I think it's goat cheese ice cream yeah it's not bad <laughs> but I wouldn't, wouldn't pick that. Like if you go wouldn't to choose that one. you never pick uh, goat ice cream. I don't know about you. I probably would. Just tell me, Pavel, if you could be anything other than a cyclist, what would you be doing? Uh, actually, I quite like cooking. Maybe, oh, yeah? yeah. Kind of open my restaurant or cafe, you know, I would like that. Yeah? Having something, yeah, something to do with, uh, with food. Would you be the chef? Or would you just run the place? No, I don't know. You know, you have to, to study for it. Uh, really, you have to just like you practice all that stuff. But if, if I would have, yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. And you, Jack? What would you be doing if you're not, if you were a pro cyclist? Uh, I got into university 
for outdoor education before I turned professional. So I probably would have gone to university and studied outdoor education and been either like a school teacher or worked at a, a camp or like an outdoor center. Oh, okay. Alrighty, so there you go. That's an interesting would little you fact. Be? <laughs> what would I be if I wasn't an amateur cyclist? I'd be a professional surfer. I was always like, when I was growing up, I was like, I'm gonna be a pro surfer. And then I was not good enough. And then I was like, I'll try and be a pro cyclist. Wasn't good enough. No, I think I enjoy what I do a lot. Making videos and taking photos. I mean, I'm super lucky in that I get to do pretty much whatever I want. I ride my bike heaps with pretty good bike riders. I could go traveling and go surfing if I wanted to. Photography is a pretty, pretty lifestyle oriented job, especially freelance photography. So yeah, good times. You just add a little bit of extra resistance on here. Oh no, hold on. It's not touching. No. I thought it was touching. I was going to say you've just got your... No, that's for aerodynamic downforce. Oh, this is for the downforce. And then this one's for your... It's not a garbage bin, it's for his jacket. Ah, okay. All the fancy shit. It's what you get when you sign up to a World Tour team. No, it's what you get when you live in Andorra and it's freezing cold and you need to take all the clothes with you. And it's more convenient to keep my rain jacket behind my seat than in my pocket. Yeah, this makes sense. More aerodynamic too. <laughs> All right, so we just had a quick little brewski. Now back on the road, it's actually super, super cold. So it's about two o'clock in the afternoon, and even though there's heaps of sun out, it's still about minus two degrees. So glad I wore this many layers today. I think we've got about two and a half hours to go. Gonna do one more small climb and then head back to Andorra. Why are we stopping here, Jack? What's in this spot? This is a special font. There's always, for some reason, cars stopped here to get water from the font there. Oh, natural so, font. Just clean, nice water. Probably bloody freezing, hey? Yes, I'd imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put your hands under there. You won't feel them until tomorrow. A rapid fire a few questions with Pavel Sivakov. How old are you? 24. How old were you when you started oh, riding a bike? I think, no, when I started just riding or just racing more? Just riding. Uh, just riding, oh, I don't know, maybe four. My parents were both professionals, so. Uh -oh. okay. When did you turn pro? 18. Okay, and uh, tell me, dream car? Dream car. Hmm. It's a tough one, actually. Yeah, 911. Yeah, Porsche yeah. 911. Yeah, yeah. Porsche 911. And if you could do any other sport other than cycling, what sport? Triathlon, I, I reckon, yeah. Oh, yeah, triathlon. So, Sony endurance type stuff, yeah. Yeah, okay. And your favorite genre of music? Um, It's, it's hard between hip hop and uh, like house. I would say hip hop. Hip hop like, and house. Good. And if you could live anywhere in the whole world, where would you live? Other than Washington. Andorra, of course. Yeah, other than Andorra. <laughs> uh, well, like Barca. I, I've been spending like a bit more time lately there. Nice. All right, should we keep riding? Yes. Yep. Jack wants to get back to training. Yeah. There's vlogging, more training. Jack's just gone off to do a little 10 minute effort. We're actually just cruising up Beskaran. I came up here in the episode a few weeks ago with Jai and Ben. This is the sunniest climb in this area for sure. It's actually quite warm, which is nice because it's been freezing all day. Anyway, that's beside the point. Out here riding with Pavel. Tell me about, uh, obviously you've had a pretty upward trajectory the last couple of years yeah. in terms of your riding career. You come from good stock. You've got two ex-professional cyclist parents and then you were born in Russia, but you grew up in France. No, I'll correct you on that one. I'm born oh. in Italy. 
I grew up in France, so my parents, they started a career in Italian teams. Oh, okay. So I'm born there. And then when I was one year old, we moved to France because my dad signed with a French team. And then since then, I uh, lived in France until I moved here in Andorra, which is almost three years. Yeah, it's going to be three years uh, next month, I think. So you're only Russian by blood, but not by... Exactly, yeah. Interesting. So you grew up in Italy and then in France? Yeah, yeah, I did. And what was your first professional team? So basically, I was riding for a French club in Saint-Gaudens, which is not so far from Andorra, in the Pyrenees. That's where I started in Saint-Gaudens. The tour is actually going there quite often. Last year, there was a finish there. Uh, I think it was, it was like, like stage 18. 14 or something, stage yeah, 13. Yeah, it, it was raining. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Down that, that day. The breakaway stayed away. Yeah, yeah, that was the one. Yep. She was starting from Andorra. So oh, that was the stage that started in Andorra? Yeah, yeah. So we finished in my hometown. They passed my village. Oh, wow. I was pretty, yeah, I was pretty pissed to miss it. Not yeah. pissed, but I was to be disappointed maybe. But for sure, what happened again? They passed my village. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because, yeah, it's a common, common area. Yeah. For the tour. So, yeah, and then, uh, then as a U23, I signed for the BMC development team. Okay. Yeah, two years there, and that's when I signed 2018 for Team Sky. Now, talking about training for this year, obviously Jack's off doing kind of his own three efforts, and then you got Ben, who's been riding a lot with him. Ben's doing quite a lot of like high intensity stuff. Where does your level of training sit at the moment for this part of the season? Well, I haven't, I haven't really hit the high intensity. I'm thinking I'm more like close to Jack. Jack is maybe doing a bit more of these zone trees. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment as well. I would have like a session like today would be five to six hours, just uh, general riding. But then an effort session would be around 50 minutes of these zone three efforts with some spikes. 50 minutes? Yeah, in total, like you would spread it through 20 minute effort, like 15 minutes yeah. or 10 minutes efforts. Low zone three with a high intensity spike, 30 seconds or up to a minute. And the intensity of these spikes would vary as well. It would be more like the, as we call the cap 10 zone, which is your power for 10 minutes. It's, it's demanding, but it's not crazy. So as we call the SAP, sustained aerobic power, that's the zone we're working at. And also few sprints like low gear, a slow start and stuff so this is like also this is demanding but not not as much as a proper proper effort session so when you turn pro with sky how did that feel i mean having had professional cyclist parents were they super proud of you and i mean that's a it's a pretty big deal to to turn pro for like what is essentially one of the world's best teams when you're first year pro oh, it was amazing it was like a dream especially joining guys like Rumi, G, yeah. Piato, oh, super strong roster to yeah, be honest. Such a stacked roster, yeah. hey? Yeah, it was a bit like a dream, you know, you with them guys and you realize they're just normal persons. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Normal yeah. guys, normal riders. But still, you know, even now, you know, I respect them so much. I think they are a bit angry or whatever. I'll just keep it quiet and do what I say because it's like kind of, you know, you, you see them boys when you grow up and they still like, they still have a massive respect for them. It's kind of, you know, I treat them, they're a bit bold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we are on the same level with them guys, I don't think it will change. You know, it's just like they're there and they're always that kind of yeah, level above in your own head. Even if I win something big, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's not going to change. Tell me for 2022, personal ambitions. Last year was not the best year for me, to be honest. With the Giro, I crashed out of the Giro. Yeah. Was in pretty good shape. I had quite a lot of crashes. It was a bit of a technical issue, you know, on my downhills, but now I work pretty well, pretty hard on that, and I hope to solve it now. And yeah, to be honest, just get back to uh, to really high level. My level of 2020, that level I had there was, was really good. And, and then, yeah, always, you, you know, you need that tiny bit of luck but I think you create your own luck so uh yeah just just have a, a solid consistent season be happy you know not not have the feeling that I could, I could do more last year I ended up the season I was like I could have done something else like I could have done more it was pretty hard mentally yeah I understand that but in that sense of performance I wasn't really satisfied yeah. so just step up the game yeah get back to the level that yeah. everyone knows you for yeah exactly That's right. all right Time to chuck a Yui. Gloves on. Time to head down back to Andorra. Yup. Straight up the hill back to Andorra. Let's do it.
Alrighty, so that is us done. Big day out on the pedals. Just did like 168 kilometers, I think. A bit over 2,200 meters climbing, so a big one. If you want to see any of the stats from this ride, it'll be in my Strava and Jack Strava. There's a link to both down in the description and also Pavel. I don't know, does Pavel yep, use Strava? He does. Pavel will chuck it up on Strava as well. Just want to say a big thanks to Jack for letting me sit on for the last five and a half hours. Just tell us quickly, you're off to Valenciana first. Yeah, it's my first race, but I'm off to training camp is the next thing I have going on in a couple of days around the Calpe area. And then the first race will be Valencia and then UAE. And and Pavel will be at UAE as well. Yeah, cool. And then the build up to hopefully the tour, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Are you in the tour team? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I'll be in the tour team. Okay, so, so I'll be there. And then uh, it kind of builds up with the last preparation race being probably Dolphin there. So not doing Romandy, too cold for Romandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sweet, so we're gonna keep an eye on Jack over the course of this season. Obviously give Jack a follow on Instagram. I'll put a link to that down below. If you enjoyed that episode, you can like and subscribe. <laughs> give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next episode of Tristan Take Video very, very soon. Alright, adeo.